Aloha boys and girls and welcome back to the Hawaii Nature Center for episode 2 of Healthy Habitats. I'm your host Mr. Taylor joined here with a couple of friends of mine Homer, where are you going Homer? And Mr. Davis. Oh, how's everyone doing? So for our episode 2 of Healthy Habitats we're going to go and explore a different habitat. Last week we were visiting the meadow but today we're going to visit a freshwater stream. Are you excited? Because I know I am. Before we go exploring an awesome freshwater habitat, let's review some concepts that we learned last time you were here. We talked about four basic needs that all living things need to survive. Now, do you remember what those were? Homer, do you remember? No. He doesn't remember. Maybe you can help him out. Let's think of the first one. Did you say water? If you did, correct. All living things need fresh water. Let's think of the second one. Food, yeah. Did you have a healthy breakfast this morning or a nice lunch? I know I did. I need those nutrients to make sure that I'm awake and moving around. The third one would be, yes, shelter, right? Shelter protects plants and animals from the elements like rain and water falling from the sky like snow or wind. And then lastly would be space. Space to grow, space to move around. If I'm a big animal, I need lots of space. But if I'm smaller, kind of like Homer, I need smaller space. But I still need space to move around. I can't be all cramped up. So those are the four basic things that all living things need to survive. And now I want you to take that with you while we go explore the freshwater habitat and think of where those four basic necessities are for these types of plants and animals. All right, awesome, let's go. We've made it here to the Makiki stream. We're about to explore freshwater habitat, but before we do that, I wanna ask you a couple of questions. Question number one, where do you think all the water comes from that is flowing down the stream? That's right, up in the mountains it's raining and all that rainwater collects in freshwater streams and rivers just like the one behind us. Now that water from the mountain eventually flows out to the ocean. Water in the ocean is salt water and the water that we find in our freshwater stream is fresh. So the animals that we're going to find are a little different, right? Can you think of any animals that we might find in our freshwater stream? Now, if you were thinking fish, you were right. Do you think there's big fish or small fish in a small stream? If you said small fish, you're right. Fish like guppies or mosquito fish. Also, shrimp but small shrimp. We call these shrimp grass shrimp because they're small and tiny like grass. Also, we might find some prawns, Tahitian prawns that have long arms and pinchers to help defend themselves. We might even find freshwater snails that have these cool spiral shells that help protect them. The shell acts as their shelter. Even freshwater clams too. And a really special native fish that we call the o'opu. And here's a picture of an o'opu life cycle. They're so cool because they start their life in fresh water, go down to the ocean, and then to complete their life cycle, they come back upstream with a suction cup on their belly that helps them grasp onto the rocks so that they can lay their eggs back in freshwater ponds. Mr. Davis is now gonna show us some tools and equipment we can use to go fishing, and some very helpful safety tips while we're by the stream. Thanks, Mr. Taylor. First things first, always safety. Before you enter the stream, check your body for small cuts that may be bleeding. Because sometimes the water in the stream may be a little dirty. 
Now we, want, we don't want any of those cuts to be infected. Second, materials. Always have a good net. Mr. Taylor and I have our nets ready. Make sure there's no holes in them so you don't lose anything you're catching. Buckets. Here's a nice uh, Tupperware bucket that we use to have a good view of our creatures. I prefer a five gallon bucket because it holds more water. Okay. I also brought some traps. You don't necessarily need a trap, but today it's going to help us catch a multitude of aquatic animals. Okay, we're going to put some bait in the middle and see what comes out. And last but not least, a good pair of water shoes. Okay, mine have a felt bottom that help it stay, help you stay from slipping on these slippery rocks. Okay, you don't have to have a felt bottom. Uh, water shoes. You can get old tennis shoes, Crocs even will work, and Mr. Taylor has a wonderful set of waders. Okay, so we're going to go on the stream and have some fun. we have another really cool aquatic plant growing. This is called kalo. Kalo is an essential plant that grew throughout the Pacific and many people would eat it. They can eat the leaves and they can eat the corms that are underground. The lo'i is also a habitat on its own. And if we take a look, we'll see a number of different aquatic animals living inside the lo'i, like damselflies, dragonflies, snails, shrimp, even some small fish. And if we might be lucky, we could spot a tadpole. This is algae, okay, a very essential part of the ecosystem. Lots of different aquatic animals use it as food and it also generates oxygen. Now that we've finished our outdoor exploration, let's go inside and have some fun with some arts and crafts. Let's go. Great job, Mr. Davis. You too. Oh, look, here's the rain for all of our freshwater plants and animals. Isn't it great? We're gonna go inside though and make some crafts. Let's have some fun. Welcome back. Now that Homer and I have gotten out of the rain, it's time to make a craft. 
this craft is easy enough, you should be able to find all the supplies that you need just in your house. In this project, we're going to recreate one of the animals that we found down at the stream. How about a freshwater guppy? Being sneaky, Homer. You're not being sneaky. We've made a guppy, and Homer wants to ride it as it swims away. Does anybody remember the craft that we did last time? That's right, a nature notebook. If you have your nature notebook now, we'd like to open it up and write down our first thoughts. I was thinking, since we had such a great day today, that we could be able to write down maybe our favorite experience from today. You could either write it down or you can draw a picture of something really cool that you saw. Hmm. I had a great day today and I hope you did as well. Thank you for joining us on episode two, High Nature, Healthy Habitats, Freshwater Streams. We saw a ton of different types of species today, from Tahitian prawns to bristlenose catfish, even grass shrimp. We even found a loicalo in the back of the forest. Next time you join us, we're going to explore a forest habitat, and we might even come across a secret cave in Makiki. But until then, make sure you're staying safe, and staying healthy. Aloha from the Hawaii Nature Center. Aloha, I'm Todd Cullison, Executive Director of the Hawaii Nature Center. During this time of social distancing, we know it's important that your keikis and families stay connected to nature. To address this, we have developed a new online program called High Nature. These educational and fun videos are a great tool to learn about Hawaii's unique natural environment and stay connected virtually. We hope you find the value in our efforts and consider making a donation to support this. The donation can be made at our website at www.hawaiinaturecenter.org. Mahalo for your continued support and I hope that you enjoy exploring nature with the Hawaii Nature Center. Thank you.